I'm at the IBC 2024 and uh, one of the technologies that we started covering last year was the DVB-I standard. And right now we're going to go to the DVB booth and look at the latest innovations and Thomas Stockhammer from Qualcomm will kickstart the talk about the standards. Okay, good afternoon. This is the second day of IBC and we're here at the DVB booth, so I'm very happy uh, that I see some things in action. But uh, let me explain. So, I am actually, uh, had, we had the ideas to develop what is called the DVBI, uh, which is a service list. And to have this DVBI was an idea, basically an independent service layer that can accommodate any transport technologies. Initially, it was thought about using uh, internet delivery or a DVB. T2, DVB-S2, but actually it's flexible enough and so we also said, well, we want to integrate cellular 5G technologies into this service list as well. So what we said basically, we need to create a certain amount of signaling, of APIs to make this work and we wrote a spec about this initially combining what was done in 5G Mac, in 3GP, in Etsy with a DVB-I uh, list and we have a technical report out of Etsy where we basically said this is how it could work, right? So then we did a little bit of more spec work and basically said, hopefully somebody implements it. So what I'm seeing now, something like this seems to be in action. And my colleague, Hordy from 5G Mac, seemingly has done some effort to implement the vision to integrate DVBI and 5G Mac and actually giving us some cool features. So Hordy, is there anything happening on this? Can you explain what I can actually see and has been done? Yes, Thomas, there's actually a lot happening and you see here the logos of all the participants in this demo. What we did as part of the 5 Mac reference tools is to support the standardization of features, for instance, in 3GPP with reference implementations of the specs. So what we see here is a complete end-to-end -end chain of 5 broadcast with seamless switching and also the integration of this end-to-end -end chain with a DVBI player. So what we have in this demo is a server that acts as an origin or as a CDN. From this CDN, we are pushing content on 5G broadcast and also making this content available on Unicast. So when we reach the devices, the devices capable of receiving 5G broadcast are able to get the content from the transmitter, and if the 5G broadcast signal, let's say, fails, you are out of coverage, or you enter in a, right, in a coverage gap, the phone is able to get the same content over Unicast, connecting over the internet to this um, origin server, and display the content into the player without interruption. This is what is shown in this uh, smartphone with our 5G Mac player, and on top of this, what we are doing as well is the integration with the DVBI player. So basically, the video and the media content that comes either from 5G Broadcast or Unicast is passed transparently to a DVBI player. So users watching this video on the DVBI player actually do not know if the content is coming from Broadcast or Unicast. So, Hori, can I just ask uh, one more question on that one? So, basically, what you're saying is the user is completely unaware if the signal comes through broadcast, through unicast, and it's also that the signal can be picked up by any player. It's not that you need a dedicated player. So, basically, it fulfills the idea of a standard and it also fulfills the idea of a transport technology. Am I understanding it right? Correct. It fulfills the idea and I think it's a big change with respect to traditional broadcast technologies in which the service is not attached to the transport uh, technology. Transport technology here is just carrying uh, media segments in this case and the user is able to consume the content in any app, ideally even in an OTT streaming app that you download right from your, from your Play Store. And the video is just running, the user doesn't know, the tutorial teams can develop any app they want and the content just comes from unicast or broadcast. With any new broadcasting technology, the most important thing to think about before you launch is testing. So to meet this need, DTG Testing have created a test suite that aims to test all the features of DVBI. Because one of the unusual things about DVBI is that you're broadcasting metadata and programming with very little knowledge of what the receiving device actually is or even what kind of device it is. It's a completely open standard. So we've provided a test suite 
that allows you to test your receiver objectively against metadata. Now to do that, we aim to provide all the features of DVBI, all the elements that can be tested, all, this, all the different data types. And this is, I can give you a quick run through of what this, is, this looks like. So for example, I'm showing this channel here. This is playing uh, a dash stream. If we go to channel four, the uh, system will now play an HLS stream. And we prioritize the, we use this to test the prioritization of the different instances and the different uh, media types that DVBI can handle. If we go back to channel one, we can illustrate uh, how a channel loads, but also then a linked application will launch on top of it. So DVBI provides lots of different ways to launch linked applications, and they all need to be tested. And so what we've got here is a very technically oriented display saying what kind of application this is and where it was launched from. But if we go into the EPG, I can show you more of how this principle works. So here we have an EPG populated with programs which have very techie sounding names with IDs on the end. But that's all about allowing a tester to be sure that the right data is appearing for the right programming. We're also seeing here click-through links, they can be tested. And we also have indications for accessibility. DVBI has very uh, comprehensive uh, signaling for accessibility features, but you've got to be able to test them to make sure they're in the right place. So if you click on a program, you can get more information about it. And again, this is here where we're able to try and test out all the available information types. So you have program synopses, logos, uh, information about accessibility, uh, parental guidance, availability of programming. So we provide these data types with pass and fail conditions uh, that allow you to comprehensively test out your application. So here we can underline the uh, potential of DVBI to deliver services that are a TV-like experience to other devices by showing the DVBI test suite running on a, uh, a, a demonstration application. And this is one where we see the different uh, instances of this service. So we have Dash and HLS, and I can switch between them on this, on this version of the app. So I can switch from Dash to HLS. And when we're testing, this is very useful to prove what is actually in the metadata. Um, if I jump back to service one, I can show another feature because those uh, instances now have different uh, accessibility features. So we have a full range of subtitling and audio description and dialogue enhancement. And this is all signaled in, in the DVBI uh, data. And we can present this on this test app. Now you wouldn't show that to a viewer, to a viewer but it, for testing purposes, it's very useful to see that happening. We can show similar things if we go through to the guide. And here we have individual program items, all of which have their own signaling of accessibility features. And those are shown by special symbols there. We're also highlighting programs here that match the accessibility preferences of the viewer by highlighting in the gray. So we allow the viewer to set up their preferences. And they've set up their preferences for subtitling, audio description and signing. And we show that in the EPG. And as part of the tests, we test that those uh, preferences are correctly shown uh, in the guide. We can also show in this demonstration app the box sets working on the uh, uh, working on a tablet. So again, this is all testing. So the logos are not necessarily friendly, but from a test point of view, it's very useful to see that they're present. And this allows you to drill down through a box set uh, and select an individual program you want to play. And here we're providing full testing for series links uh, as well as um, individual programs. So I'm going to show you a quick run through of the uh, RTE trial. It's been uh, led by RTE, uh, effectively replicating the Serview network and implementing DVBI on that. Um, so we're looking here, this is RTE2. If we go into the setup of the TV, with DVBI you now get a new uh, setup option. So during installation, you have the channel scan, uh, you're familiar with DV the aerial, cable, analog and satellite, but now you have an internet setup uh, menu. 
and this allows you to add the IP defined channels to the, uh, to the main service list. So we found 12 DVBI channels. And so now on the channel list, we can see our RTE here is shown as uh, IP. And that's because we don't have a broadcast signal of uh, RTE1 here. Uh, so we're taking this off a live dash stream. Some of the other channels are coming off local multiplexers, so they're not shown as IP. So this is true hybrid working. And as you get to this, you start to notice differences, like the channel logos down the side. Those are delivered by IP. So if we go into RTE1, uh, watching television is like watching television. But with this, when we go into the guide, we start noticing more differences. So we have uh, click-through already for um, uh, playback. But we can also, if we go back and find some of the programs, we can start to see the richer EPG that we can now deliver for, uh, uh, for viewers in Ireland. So if I go for more info, so this is the more info page of uh, this program. And so we can show, we've got the title of course and, and the subtitle, we can now give a full image. And we've also got descriptions, there's information here about access uh, facilities, availability of playback, um, duration, resolution, all available delivered by the enhanced metadata that you get with DVBI. Um, we also have better accessibility signaling that we can now offer. So we have here the subtitles. This is generated from the DVBI um, metadata, showing the subtitling. Uh, we can also now, as a, a feature that we've implemented, uh, bring box sets into the main UI of the TV. So rather than having to always go out to the uh, player application, we can actually access box sets without leaving the main uh, interface of the TV. So here is a box set that's been constructed for a Fair City soap opera. And we can now drill through that again without leaving the main UI of the TV. But from there, we can click through to the player. Uh, another feature in this, um, uh, in this proof of concept is that we can now give the RTE player, the catch-up app, its own channel. So it now has, uh, lives alongside all the linear channels in its own, as a channel in its own right. So I can click through from there and that launches the, ITV pl so the RTE player uh, and we can now access that as a channel. And now if I channel down, if I channel down from there, I come to the next channel down. I don't actually exit the app in the way you might normally. So I think that's all the main features of the uh, very successful proof of concept that we've done for Ireland. So here we're showing uh, an application of DVBI which is slightly different from what is uh, commonly thought of, it, of its main use. This is a uh, SAT TV service operated by UTELSAT. This is based around creating uh, curated lists of free-to-air services. And SAT TV is delivered using set-top boxes which are programmed for a particular market. But here we're able to do this using DVBI without a set-top box. So if you look at the channel list we have here, this is the uh, international channel list of SAT TV. And you can already see that it's enhanced with logos using the DVBI metadata delivery. But if I go into the uh, setup of the TV, during the installation we have the automatic channel scan. And here we have the usual channel scans, but also this extra internet delivered now. And if we accept that we want to change our, our service list, we're now offered the different market sectors of SAT TV, but as service lists rather than as physical devices. So we were using the, the Hotbird 13 degree uh, international service list. We're now using, if we switch to the Italian one, it now goes through this service discovery process it's a big service list, so it'll take a few seconds. But when that comes, we'll be able to switch back and see a newly customized list of 229 channels. So the TV will now switch back to the main list. And if you look now, you see we have a list of channels targeted uh, to um, the Italian market. This is selected from the thousands of channels available on Hotbird and organized in a way that suits the Italian market. Now if we go into the EPG, we see an EPG delivered by IP with richer information as possible using DVBI, DVBSI. 
and we can get more information about this program depending on what's available.